Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 12 FPS at EGAD Headquarters. I am your lovely host, Carmichael, also known as Mikey, here today with my very good friend, Winona. Or, Winona, my bad. <laughs> Say hi to the audience, Winona. Ah, doing pretty good so, so far today. Ooh, it's Memorial Day for me, and just enjoying the, just enjoying the afternoon. I love the way you phrase that makes it sound like we're in two different realities where it's not Memorial Day for me. <laughs> Look, some people celebrate it, some people don't. This is a... <laughs> America, it's a, sm it's a smaller holiday that pe pe people in other com countries wouldn't probably know about. I would argue that point, but fair. Mostly <laughs> because America will not shut up about it, but continuing. I mean, you're not also... I mean, you're not wrong either. <laughs> mm hmm So, continuing. And I will be playing Belial, also known as Scratch, Mr. S, the big D, the devil. And who will you be playing? And today I'll be playing again my little mad lad, mad lad. <laughs> A delightful little boy. Sweet, sweet boy. <laughs> And today, the FPS we will be conducting for you is called The Devil Might Lose to a Small Child Again. <laughs> because this, believe it or not, is a sparring FPS, which mostly start with the tagline, surely, surely he's not going to lose to a small child again after the first time, right? Surely. And then the tile screen pops up like a fucking... It's always sunny Phil in, in Philadelphia, Tag. Just yeah, the devil might lose to a small child again. <laughs> a small fun fact: this FPS actually needed redone because we tried doing one before a particular solo FPS, but things changed, and so that FPS can no longer be considered canon. Yeah, it was never it was never published. But if it sounds like we make some in jokes, it's because we've tried this at least once. At least once. Now. Would you like to begin on where Mad Lad is at the moment, or would you like to begin on where I am at the moment? Well, first important thing, because last time we said it was before, mm -hmm. but because some things have changed, do you still want this to be before Hunting Party Episode 2, or do you want it to be after? Hmm, that's a good question. I can work either way. You know, Mad Lad is probably, it has... Recently had a really good FPS, uh, say, literally the other day, where he was able to fill up his confidence. And, you know, let's make it, let's make it now. Alright, so this is a present time FPS and not a before a game FPS. Understood. Yes. So, would you like to start on where Malad is at the moment, or would you like to start on where Belle is at the moment? Let's start with Belle. Well, at the moment, Bell is sitting on his, well, sitting in his sort of pseudo-dormitory, pseudo-bunk spaces bed. He's sitting on the floor. And, of course, the bunk beds are all around for multiple folks to sleep. But he is sitting on the floor with his, uh, with his legs crossed. And appears to be finishing emptying out his bag in his hammer space, having laid out a series of miscellaneous items on the floor in front of him. The way his legs are crossed, he appears to be caught in a position of deep thought. Legs crossed, arms folded, he's got, you know, the one finger on his goatee, working his way through it with finger and thumb. It, it, it's the look of the devil in thought. And... I'll go into what is actually visible once Mad Lad sees it, because Bell hasn't moved from his spot just yet. But he appears to be looking a few things specifically over, including the token from royalty, the letter, and the mirror that Ollie let him borrow, among a decent portion of his other stuff. <laughs> he also appears to have removed the berry tattoo he previously attuned to, so it is back to being a tattoo needle on the floor, because he wasn't quite satisfied with where it's at. 
So he's just sitting there looking thoughtful, looking, you know, thinking. He's thonking. He's doing the pool bear think, think, think. <laughs> you know, let, let's start this off with <laughs> a stealth roll for Mad Lad. <laughs> because I have a little... I have a little funny joke, but this could only work if his stealth is good. <laughs> All right, first roll of the session. Let's see. It. <laughs> oh, okay, that's rich. That is rich. Is it good or bad? I mean, <laughs> it's it's bad. It's sort of a hilarious bad. Uh -huh. The obvious cartoon sneak where you can tell you're being what? Oh, that's a two plus four. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's the is the I originally if it was good it was gonna do the Jaws theme, but no, this is like this is like the obvious cartoon kid cartoon. Like the kids try really hard to sneak snonk, and even though they they are trying to do a good job, they just can't. Yeah, so, why don't you roll me a perception check? Will do. Alright, that's a little, that's a bit better, but that's because his perception is usually a little bit better, so that's a, can I actually type here? Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna roll a die, don't worry about it. That's a 15. Yeah, okay. So that is... Mm -hmm. So that is... Five plus... Five plus six is eleven. What mm -hmm. is your passive perception? Um, His passive perception is a sixteen. Okay, so as Bell is sitting on the floor looking over these things, and you can see he's got a plus, he's got a variety of items on the ground. There are daggers, there is a explorer's pack with a backpack, an old bedroll, an old mess kit, a tinderbox, some unused torches, some rations boxes, so, you know, snack boxes for the road, an old water skin, some rope, a Good portion of dice of a lot of different varieties. He appears to have been busy getting dice. <laughs> a bag, a tiny, it's a small enough bag to fit in the palm of your hand with a drawstring keeping it shut. A, what appears to be a tattoo needle. Some more dice. A cowboy hat. A pair of ankle biter boots. A small looking acorn. And if you would recognize a slightly familiar mirror. But that's if you've ever seen the mirror of the past in Ollie's house before. There's also, in on the floor, some pocket lint, a few pictures, a golden fiddle, a pile of what appears to be rolled up parchments, or parchments that were at least rolled for so long they have a natural curve to them, a perfume spritzer, a box of old scratches cool catnip, which you can roll a medicine or history check on if you want. Eh, probably. A bottle of wine, two glasses, a burlap sack, a mallet, a wallet full of photos, a silly little a silly little wizard's costume hat with a cardboard crest, 15 pieces of cardboard gold, a big old buppet, a, a buppet? bucket of popcorn, a bracelet, what appears to be a romantic novel, but you're not sure. <laughs> a deck of cards. An axe. A fancy golden top hat. A dancer's outfit. And another picture. Though you would need to get closer to see what's on some of the pictures. That's and fair. And as, as you're standing there looking these over, he doesn't fully give way to the fact that he has noticed you, but you see the way that when you peek in, you see the way his... Uh, long you see the way his ears sort of perk up 
and turn toward you like on a like on a scope kind of. Yeah, I here's how I have it. It's like Madeline tries to sneak around to get closer to Bell. Like he's on top of some of the bunk beds. And he's like going from bunk bed to bunk bed, and now he's like on top of one of the bunk beds and and, and looking down on Bell and all of his stuff. <laughs> I believe if you're close enough, you can actually see what the different pictures are, if you want to try and look at those. Uh, Mad Lad would be curious. Alright, give me one more perception check. Alright. That's also a five, bless your... Bless yeah, your that, was a medicine on, that was the medicine on the cat, and it's sort of saying, he, he doesn't know ah. shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it just looks like a tin of catnip, you're not sure what's special about it. Huh. Weird, but okay. That's a dirty 20. So, you see a few different pictures. The first one appears to be a very worn-out performance photo, which shows a sleek, slightly fluffy-looking uh, black Muppet-born cat in a lovely dress with a fancy hat, which... You would not have the context, but that's a photo of his mom, Delilah, mm -hmm. when she was younger and healthier and not dying from plague. The wallet appears to be full of photos, but they're all photos of various fiendish creatures like imps and other such henchmen, so it's clear that these are like the equivalent of family photos, considering <laughs> how this wallet looks. So, a bunch of little cuphead fiends basically going about various duties and activities. Nice. Nice. A few pictures you also note of him with others, including, well, including a die head, but you don't get too many details on him until you look at one of the other photos, which appears to be another performance photograph, like the one of his mother that you don't realize is his mother, but, shh, I'm assuming so, I got ambushed at the, the, honey, I'm sorry, you're not coming in. <laughs> Poor gal. Oh, hi, Daisy. Daisy's adjusting to sleep. Baby girl. Sleepy, sleepy daughter. Sleepy little black yeah. kitty. And the photograph you see appears to be of an object head tune. Clearly rubber hose in style, which appears to be a six-sided dye for his head. Specifically, a Bakelite dye in butterscotch colors. Though you're not sure if it's just the way the photo is made, or if it's just, like, his colors in general. Mm-hmm. Because the photo is worn out enough, the color of the dye head almost blends into the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Who appears to be wearing a rather nice suit, tailcoat, tie kind of ensemble, and appears to be sitting on stage. His face has been nicely painted and primmed up and proper. And while you can see the signature at the bottom, you can't fucking read his handwriting. Yeah... Signatures be like that. Eventually, as you're looking this over, it's a little long enough that you hear Bell basically go, You know the bunks squeak, right? Now I do. <laughs> Madla just stares at him. <laughs> You've been making a lot of squeaking. I would assume a child would know how to sneak better. I've had a, I've had a rough patch of time. Mm. Join the club. He does not turn to look at you, but the ears just turn back to the objects as he's looking them over, and he appears to be looking over a piece of paper. So... Are you truly the devil, as they say? There is a brief moment where his ears kind of pin back for a minute, but you would need an insight check to tell what the fuck it is. He's gonna definitely do that. Is that a... Okay. Okay. That ain't bad. That's a 12. What? There's sort of... It's a moment that you've... The behavior's a little more natural when you consider that when he first showed up, he had little to no memory whatsoever and was very cautious of everyone and everything ever. Mm -hmm. It's this brief expression on his face and in his ears and the body language of his tail that you can see that briefly 
there is a look of caution for a moment. Like he's been caught off guard just slightly, but when he glances up, he the ears sort of turn back up and he tries to make it look like he was not perturbed by the question before he goes, That would depend on why you're asking. I mean... I might be. Bad lad looks at him. <laughs> But it I, depends why you're asking. Because I find it very hard to believe. <laughs> and why is that? I mean, if you're the devil, why are you up here not down in Toon version of hell? There's a slow eyebrow lift. I believe you do recall the fact that when I first showed up, I was black and white and mute and barely remembered a thing. Not really. I didn't get to know you very well. I've only heard rumors. He rolls his eyes and he doesn't answer. He just goes back to the objects. Look, I really need to fight the devil. <laughs> no. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. A guy gets stronger. And you're not going to do it by fighting me. Why not? It's just a spar. He doesn't. <laughs> I am not in the mood to fight you. Is that all you want? Pretty much, yeah. Then get lost. That lad stays there. <laughs> he turns back to the he turns back to the letter he's reading. There's sort of an awkward silence as he's waiting for you to leave. <laughs> and then goes Go on. Get out. No. Choo. And that that lad even makes a small little hiss. <laughs> Would a bucket of popcorn convince you to leave? No, because I can get that downstairs. Would a bottomless bucket of popcorn get you to leave? <laughs> Bad lad looks at the popcorn. Tempting, but no. <laughs> and with a shot. And because he doesn't like the fact you are looking, he is going to start putting the stuff back into his bag and hammer space, one by one. Mad I say Mad Lab points to like photos of the devils are like, are those your minions? I would assume. Not entirely sure, I would assume. Ah. That last is quiet again. <laughs> and Bell continues putting things away, though he does leave the wallet out as he's putting other stuff out. Also, is that the golden fiddle from the legend? What legend? You know, the t they, the devil went down to that one place. That sort of songy legend. Folktale. That's what it's called. The other eyebrow slowly lifts and he looks at the golden fiddle. And I'm gonna roll him a check real quick. Maybe. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Because that is a solid 8 on history. <laughs> I mean, I won this fiddle from a teeth thing. So I'm not sure where you're getting the whatever legend thing. Unless they're telling a legend about how I beat a tiefling and got a golden fiddle? It was usually the other way around, but I'm not very sure if he took revenge and got it back. Eh. He shrugs. Does it, I mean, it's a nice... Does it even do anything? Or is it just like a regular fiddle that is gold? I don't know. I mean, I use it for some magical spells, and I use it to perform, but don't know that it does anything yet. I haven't really tried. Huh. 
Fair enough then. And not like I bring it out too often. Normally when you pull up something of solid gold, people want to steal it. I mean, yeah. He I'm... does put away the golden fiddle. But continues putting things up. Now that just watches he puts everything away. The last things he leaves out, the things that he hasn't put back yet, are a few things. There's that mirror, the, the weird-looking handheld mirror. There's the small photo of the die object head. And the piece of paper in his hands. And he's just looking at those now. What's those about? What's what about? The things that you didn't put away. Nanya. Haha, <laughs> Nanya business. I heard that one before. Then it's my business, not yours. Go get ice cream or something. He gives you another hand wave, continues looking the stuff over. No. If you don't go, I'm going to go. And I'm going to find somewhere to hide where you can't find me. I'll do my damnest to try to find you. You could use your time with much more valuable things. Like fighting someone else. No one else is no one else is here right now. Oh, you didn't go looking for your big old wasp friend? He normally likes to spar. Bad <laughs> time to make it inside for Bell. Okie dokie. Hang on a minute, I gotta double check something. Hang on. Depends where the fuck I went, actually. Hang on. Odds, does he know that he can... This is just intelligence check. Does he know that he can do a thing? Mm, he does. So, we're gonna make that insight check with advantage. <laughs> that would be a... 17 plus 3 for Dirty 20. Yeah, there's like a... There's a Mad Lad visibly sort of scrunches back. And almost like he... De and <laughs> Bell doesn't know what happened, but there was definitely a small war flashback <laughs> for a moment. He said, uh... He doesn't say, uh... He's, um, busy, um, right now, too. Um, don't want to bother him. Um, yeah... He's obviously hiding something, but he is a he ain't telling shit. He's not telling anything. Yeah, Bell doesn't care to ask. He just goes, Oh, did he kick your butt too? Tragic. Another visible grimace. <laughs> you don't know what it is, but it's just like nope, nope, that's is a nope, don't want to think about that. Not at all. Would it satisfy your curiosity and make you leave if I answered your questions? Um... I mean, I still want to fight you, but I still like the, I still would like to know if you are the devil. I mean, I look like one. According to others, I sound like one. According to this letter, I still act like one, though I'm not entirely convinced on the last part. What's the letter say? The letter says nothing. It's none of your business. That lad just makes a like frustrated little kitty frustrated face. Mm. But there's a difference between being a devil and being the devil, like the big bad, the they say the bringer of evil, the, say, the Hellfire Master. 
That last title must not be popular because I don't remember that one. I've heard lots of different things. Roll me an insight check. Mm -hmm. Ooh! That's 19 on the die. Which in your inside is a plus... This is a plus two, so that'd be a twenty-one. You're not sure if all of the stuff you've just called him is an accurate title, or if he considers it accurate. But you're starting to get his intrigue, or in the very least, you think maybe you're starting to interest him only slightly. And by interest him, I mean he is starting to take the compliments. That you can see the way his tail is starting to, uh, swish, 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 swish. I mean, I say the devil is, again, just really powerful. I mean, he can, I say, and not only that, powerful in a way of a god, of anything else. That's even doubly as powerful, one would say. I mean, that's not completely inaccurate, but still. The bringer Do is... The bringer of, let's see, what's the right word for it? Not tragedies, but justice oh, in a sort no. of, almost like justice in a, as a way, like teaching people lessons and stuff, like karma. Good. Yes, perfect. Look, whatever I am and I'm not, do you think if I was in the right headspace to be doing anything else, I would be here? Mm, probably not. Correct. I lost almost all of my memory to a stupid little booby trap. I'm still getting it back. And the two tw twins, not twerps, twins, the two little boys, Ty and Matcha, apparently came looking for me to try and bring me back because the aisles are apparently disorganized without me trying to do anything. I would like to help. The problem is, you see, I am not clearly in the condition for helping against an entire island's full inhabitants. Mad Lad thinks upon this, like, like, sort of, in a way, irony is just like, they need the devil for help. That's, that's sort of weird, but at the same time, this is also Inkwell, where not everything goes by the rules. <laughs> I mean, maybe Aspire would help? Is a jog, say, jog the, me say, jog the sort of memory of at least combat and stuff? The only memory sparring with you would jog would be an unpleasant reminder of my embarrassments. I would not like that. I mean, I could say the same thing, but I'm trying to be better no matter what. And if I, and I feel like even if I get my ass kicked, as long as I keep up and c keep fighting, that's what matters. He shrugs. And he puts everything except the letter away, and gets up. And he just turns around and starts walking out the door. Come on! That dad just follows him. <laughs> and it's just We're like, not sparring. Please! No. Yes, please! No. You can spar with others. Don't you have a hamster that you can fight? Yes. But I also got beaten by them. But on the fairness, I wasn't able to use my full power. I was only able to use swords. Oh, the little animal didn't allow you to use firearms that kill animals, huh? Tragic. It was. I was using rubber bullets, but at the same time, I understand even rubber bullets can really hurt a hamster. Besides, it can't, as much as I am, much as I. Don't want to admit that I was defeated. I was defeated, but I did get practice with my sword. So even in negatives, there's positives. I'm trying to be better at this. I'm trying to be less of an asshole. 
Well, you could be less of an ass by not swearing as much. That's a start. Okay, I'm sorry. That's going to be part of my character forever. I was raised by pirates. Yes, you were raised by pirates. You weren't raised by animals. Yeah, but it was also real kind pirates, so I actually know real fucking swears. <laughs> and you don't need to use them all the time. He just smiles. <laughs> continues walking. Oh, come on! Please! No. Please? No. Please? No. Please? No. Please? No? Please? No. Please? None? Yes. Negative. See? Si. Negatory. Yes. No. Speaks yes in Grolix. <laughs> <laughs> He'd say no in Grolix. <laughs> says, says please in Draconic. <laughs> Niet. Then in Giant. <laughs> Nine. Then in Infernal. <laughs> Bell says it back in Infernal. <laughs> Oh, yeah. say sweet, you know Infernal too. Of course, my mom was a tiefling, so of course she know Infernal. You didn't inherit anything from it, but that makes sense. Tiefling bloodlines are weird. I was adopted. Hmm, makes sense. He nods along to that. Still not fighting you though. Gets oh, himself a bowl of ice cream. <laughs> Oh, come on, it's just one little, just one little spar. Again, I, I say, I, I say, use rubber bullets. I say, we be careful. I got healing magic. I, say, I have no reason to be fighting a small child, and you have no reason to be picking a fight with me. I need to get stronger. Of course, I need to start picking fights so I can get better at fighting. So he cuts off at something and just, <clears throat> just please fight. Even with a basic insight, he doesn't want to talk about what whatever he was about to bring up, but uh, say. Even if you say that picking fights will help you get better, picking reckless fights is also going to be what gets you killed. Mm. But this isn't a reckless fight. This is me asking for a spar. You are asking to spar with the devil. Ha! So you are the devil! <laughs> he looks like he just he was trying to say that as a reason but unfortunately he's talked himself into a corner and he just looks <laughs> disappointed in himself <laughs> I am the devil for the moment hee <laughs> hee Nyla just smiles as he finally got him to admit it I would still like to try and find the boys a better one, but if I can't, I suppose I'll do. I mean, it would be better to help be the devil than the actual devil unless tomb rules are, like, say something else, and he looks more confused by that statement, <laughs> but... <laughs> he, also, he also looks confused because he didn't understand what you were getting at. Your words turned to soup. There is no translation. <laughs> yeah, Matt is a his words turned to soup for him, so he's just like shakes his head. Still, this is a good say. This is a good way. Say at least for both of us to get stronger. I mean, you said you want to help them, so being strong and be able to really fight good is a good way to help. Roll me persuasion. Alrighty. What is that number? Okay, that number is that number. What is your persuasion, dear boy? And not as good as your performance. That's an 11. I would agree that trying to spar with others would make me stronger. The thing you're missing is, I doubt sparring with a child would do that. Mad Lad, uh, say Mad Lad's gonna reach into his hammer space. <laughs> oh, that's a fumble! Oh, I haven't had been, oh. I haven't had been haven't had him had a fumble in a while. Uh, what do you uh, say? What do you roll this time, Mad Lad? I am very I am now very happy. 
All right, that's okay. That that's that's funny. That's a thirteen. <laughs> Mad Lad ho uh, say takes out a frying pan, and Mad Lad looks like he's like, oh, uh, nope, that's not what I wanted to get out. Puts puts the frying pan back. <laughs> So it's still technically an effective weapon. Yeah, that is a... Wait, what's the... I say, I forget. What was the number that... Is it, was it... You had to be a 5 or had to be a 4? For the... Okay, here... No, here's the thing. Every time you fumble, the score goes up by 1 to a maximum of 5 for a fumble. So, for example, you rolled a 1 now. If you decide to roll it again, you would fumble if you rolled a two. All right, yeah. Then Mad Lad takes us out. Then I say I can't remember off the top of my head what it was what it was again. It's been a while since I've done since I've done fumbles. Mad Lad then we, we miss fumbles in this house. Continue. <laughs> Mad Lad takes out what he was trying to pull out, which was a gun. <laughs> I'm pretty dang powerful. You have a small child with a firearm. Yes. I Who knows how to powerful. use it? I, would call... I wouldn't call it powerful. I would call it reckless. I know how I'm to use it. I've been raised I, ever since I was, I say, I was born. I I learned how to, pretty much how I was born. In quote, and he does this in quotation marks over his head. I say, I was raised to how to properly use a firearm in battle. I'm of the opinion that maybe someone should have focused on raising you as a child instead of as a pirate, but fair. Unfortunately, real kind don't let you have that luxury. Hmm. Maybe they should let you have the luxury of a therapist instead. And he smiles and takes his bowl of ice cream, and he is going to walk off, and I'm going to roll him stealth to see if he can find a way to uh, sneak a difficult. That, that lads out. I was like, therapy? Who needs therapy? I don't need therapy. And Mad Lad just follows along. Well, actually, oh, as you're making the as you're making the comment of therapy, who needs therapy, right? I'm imagining you like got the eyes closed when you're doing the dismissive hand flick. Of yeah. And when you open your eyes and look, Bell is gone because uh, his roll for stealth is nineteen plus three. <laughs> so that's a twenty-two. Yeah, Roll we're gonna let investigation. Him. Yeah, they Mad Lad will try to make an investigation. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's also not the best thing in the world. And that's a f <laughs> uh, that's a five. That's another five. You have lost the devil. Peck. Congratulations. <laughs> Mad Lad's like Peck. And Mad Lad goes to try to search for the devil anyways. You search and you search. You don't find him. Bell, meanwhile, having used the miraculous power of walking off screen and then disappearing on cue, <laughs> instead reappears on top of the treehouse. The whole tree. He is just sitting on the top with his bowl of ice cream, just... Enjoying it, and I get to make rolls for the weather. Hee hee hee. Hang on, let me. Where's where's the weather is page one oh nine. Just a moment. That's one fifty three. One oh nine. One oh nine. There we go. Temperatures are normal. There is no wind. So he's probably not on the top. The top of the tree. But he's hidden in its boughs because it is heavily pouring rain outside. Hee hee hee. But he is up there just 
casually hiding from view, enjoying his food, listening to the rain fall on the tree, and looking over the love letter again. You wanna roll a wisdom save? Okay, sure. use it so give me a moment okay, so wisdom save is 11 I assume does not make it no as a voice a very familiar voice comes over your shoulder as chaos is looking it uh, looking over your shoulder at the letter, it's like, oh, what a nice letter. And since Chaos is looking over, I can actually just read what it says to you. Mm -hmm. If he chooses to read it. Oh, he reads it. He's a very curious god. Alright, let me take on the T, because this is the first time I'm putting on this character's voice. Daisy sound asleep, the sweet baby girl. Yeah, Rox has turned into a little shrimp and he's just adorable right now. She's just kneeling against my pile of clothes on the bed. Aww. If if I had been if Sassy had been in here, she would have been bow mowing and asking for head pets already. <laughs> I I love her with all my heart, but she interrupts a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's, let's not knock anything over, Mikey. So, let's go over it. Let me take one more sip of tea, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact, it is uh, hot and dry over here in the Midwest at the point of this uh, recording, so... Indeed, it is hot and dry as someone who's also in the Midwest. Okay. Uh, fair warning, I am going to mute for just a moment so I can gargle. All right. Because I need to get the tea in my throat throat. All right, all right. Okay, that should have helped. Now, if I remember what Ike said about his voice... <coughs> Hang on. <coughs> <laughs> Didn't choke on it. Didn't go down the wrong pipe. Think it just a little bit of it went. If I recall correctly, nicely, nicely, his voice attached to. <clears throat> so. The first part of it, it addresses Bell by name, and is mostly focused on seemingly flooding him with compliments. Until they get to the rest of the letter, in which the tone slightly changes from complimentary to more bittersweet. Bell, you truly are still the handsome devil I know and care about deeply. You give me a lovely buzz. You're an absolute dreamboat and a sharpshooter. I still think about our days having such fun causing trouble. And whenever it gets a little too busy over here, it's always nice thinking of how we can relax later. You are a real killer dealer, one with absolute moxie, but... Well... This isn't exactly just like one of the letters we send when we got along in the first place, is it? I hope you're okay. I know at this point that that's a thing you jokingly reply with, that's above my pay grade, but 
Sending seems to not cut it. Anytime I've tried contacting you, I've gotten white noise. I don't know where you've gone. Your code is here, and Flunky has been telling me a lot. And none of it's good. Life here has been strange without you. Folks don't seem to quite remember you, and both Flunky and I have been concerned that maybe something happened to you. Even though he claims you got away from whatever struck you, neither of us have seen hide nor hair of you. And I will say, the Isles haven't felt the same since you left. I've been held up to your position for the time being, which isn't the most foreign thing in the world to me, but it isn't the same without your lovely self here. I figured I would leave this letter as I go to search out for you. For if you get back and return to the Isles before I do, to let you know that I'm traveling as far as I possibly can for you. And if you do get to this letter before seeing me, please try and cast a sending, or send a letter back, or give me a phone call. Anything. Just... Anything. Please just let me know. Stay safe. I'll see you soon. Percy Chance. And then Chaos chimes in with the it being a lovely letter, and Bell nearly Bell needs to make an acrobatics check as he nearly falls out of the tree. That's a that's a six. You scare him and he falls. It gets tangled up in branches on the way down. Chaos smiles like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Scare me? That's the last thing you need to be worried about. I nearly dropped this thing. And it's oh. not your business what it is either, as he, as he quickly tucks the letter back into his hammer space. What are you doing here anyway? Oh, having fun. In the rain? I mean, the rain is pretty fun, but I don't see you doing anything to it. it. That's a- that is just a commentary. Please don't do anything to the rain. I actually like this weather. He points to it absolutely <laughs> pouring around the tree. Oh, I was gonna make a chocolate rain monsoon, but all right. Oh, please, Sass. But let me help you there. As he claps his hands, you teleport! Back up to where you were, and you're you're on what, and you're on a bubble, like almost like a beanie bag bubble. Oh. Uh. Thanks again. You have not fully answered the question aside from saying you're here for fun. I mean, I could say why I'm here, but it would only it would only anger you. He gives you a flat look. Try me. Plot-related reasons? Quirk at the eyebrow. Try me a little more coherently. <laughs> I'm supposed to be here. And I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And he, like, he leans back and there's, like, two little bubbles that, like, give him a little chair. And what are you supposed to be doing here, exactly? Oh, encouraging you to fight a small child. Oh, not this again. He's going to start getting up for the bubble and start climbing down the tree. <laughs> I'm not fighting Mad Lad. I've made this clear to the boy, and I don't know what he bribed you about it, but I'm not fighting him for you either. Oh, no. I don't no. need to just with a small child today. The, he's like floating down with you on the bubbles like, oh, he didn't ask me to do anything. He doesn't even know that I exist. Well, kind of. That pizza mm. thing did set him off a little bit, but, you know, that was just all fun and games. Hmm. Well, maybe you could host your fun and games somewhere else. Fortunately, my hands are tied. And just he shows, he shows up his hands, which look to be tied in ropes. 
You don't know how it happened. But now his hands are tied in ropes. Bell rolls his eyes and continues climbing down. Oh, come on. It'll be... It'll be fun. You can mess with a kid. You may say... There's a good chance that you could probably beat him. Right. And what's giving you the impression that I could or that I'd want to? I've got to roll him deception, actually. <laughs> because part of that's true, part of that's not. <sighs> honey <laughs> honey that is a five plus six so that's an eleven <laughs> I mean despite despite all that has happened to you as he looks you up and down, to say, "You're still the you're still the devil. You are really you're still pretty strong." And come on, who is a? I bet there's still some part of you. You're anything like the devil I knew from back in the day. That sort of wants to get a little bit of revenge. Wants to is a is a wants to show that he can do it. His climbing slows, and his eyes towards you narrow. Considering the fact that his deception check wasn't that great, yeah, there is part of him that does relish in the idea of somehow holding victory over small children. And it's petty. It's cartoonishly petty. But part of him wants to. The other part is like, do I really have the energy for it today? Is it worth it? What if I just get beat twice? The only dignity that was with being beaten by Taya Matra was that only the Isles knew about it. If this little guy beats me and starts bragging about it everywhere, that's it. It's curtains. There's no coming back from that. But none of this is said out loud. It's just the brief thought of either, on the one hand, yeah, fighting a small child does sound fun. On the other hand, is it worth it? Is it really? Chaos smiles. Oh, you don't really need to worry about him that much. You're lucky he's gone through some character development. He isn't... Um he has, he's not the fully bold and brash child that he was, though there's still some inklings of it. Of course, that has to do more with character than anything, but I, I think you would still find it satisfactory. Hmm. I'd really just like to pack up my things and go shopping today. I don't necessarily have the mental energy to fight a small child. And I'm not sure why you're trying to convince me to do it either. So, if you don't mind. And he's going to continue climbing down the tree. Well, if I told you, your brain would break right now. Maybe if you were fully back up and you had all your memory, it wouldn't be as taxing. But I really don't want to hurt you more than you already have been. It's been I've been waiting for you to come back. I remember the fun times back in the day. Oh, the chaos and discord that we were we did together. Oh, good times. Good times. I'm going to roll him an intelligence check to see if he does remember a little of that. Because he's looking at you with slight confusion and thought the whole why are you acting like we've why are you acting like we know each other more? We've met like once. <laughs> <sighs> intelligence check, come on, big guy. Does he remember chaos? Let's see. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid 12. Vaguely, there's a vague feeling at that, but there still is... It, it's there's more a, the... It's like, there's a vague familiarity. It's like, it seems right, but you can't remember exactly why it's right. It, it sounds... It's like, that doesn't sound correct, but I don't know enough about this to dispute it. It's that, it's that me. It's that joke. Yeah. <laughs> so... You want things to go back to being fun, and to do that, you'd threaten to break my head. That's what I'm hearing. Not exactly, but you're not entirely wrong either. It's just, it's just a spill. You, you, just, you just said the words out of your mouth were breaking my mind. If yes. you're going to just sit here, and you're going to threaten me with it rather than let it come back naturally, I don't need to sit here and listen to you. I'm going to go shopping now. And he's going to just head down the tree. You know, you want to make it 
acrobatics or athletics? Sure, why not? Because, oh, that's a, that's a really high grapple. That would be a... Nineteen plus three, so that is a twenty-two. Oh no, I'm sorry. Say that. <laughs> Just a few shorter. <laughs> so close. So what happens? There, say you are somehow wrapped around. Say chaos wraps around you like a snake. It's like. I'll tell you what. How about you fight the small child, and then I'll take you shopping. Part of you is wrapped over his mouth as well, but from what little of his face is shown amid all the coils, he is looking at you with murder. I'm going to make him a temper safe. I believe that will indeed make it. That is a 17. He is seething but composed. He's not answering you, but you can see from the tangle of limbs between you that his tail is lashing angrily. I mean, he does, like, skew up so his, ha- his head and arms are, like, popped out. Why do you want me to fight a small child so badly? I didn't think it would bother you or be any of your business. Look, and it wouldn't be bother for me either. But unfortunately, the people in higher places really want this to happen. And there's a moment that pauses before he goes... The audience or the employers? Both. Hmm. He rolls his eyes a little. And what should happen if I should say loose? I mean, you don't say, I can't say the exact outcome because I don't know the future, unfortunately. They don't give me. They don't give me that sort of power, unfortunately. I would love that. A tragic. Look. Say, even so, it will still be... Even in loss, it'll be beneficial to you. Again, I promise you shopping. And, like, shopping ba- and shopping bags just appear in his arms. <laughs> Roll me persuasion. All right. Twenty-three. Yeah, I like. I'll roll a wisdom save for funsies, but I don't think he'll beat a twenty-three. Yeah. Unless he net twenties or something. Yeah. Even then, his wisdom is a plus uh, zero, so. Yeah, that's that's a four. He thinks on it for a long minute. You can see the way his eyes squint just that let hmm. Before eventually Fine. One round. That's it. That's all that is needed. And he claps his hands and there and he's inside the play inside the tree house. And Matt, and he's in the kitchen. And Mad Lad's eating ice cream. <laughs> that was just both of you were holding bowls of ice cream, just staring at each other, bug eyed. Dang, you're good. Doll's face slowly falls to annoyance because I assume as he looks around, chaos is not there. Yeah, chaos is not chaos is not there. And for some reason, it stopped raining. Oh, but I was liking that weather. Ah. Huh? You just want one sparring match, right? Yes. 
Just one. Just one. If you lose, you're not going to cry about it. Nope. And if you win, you're not going to brag. Or tell anyone that you won. If that's a part of the terms and conditions, I won't. I wasn't going to call it terms and conditions, but I mean, if you're going to call it that, I won't complain. I mean... Let me you... put this in the freezer. <laughs> I mean, devils are like that, but fair. And Mad Lad goes to put his ice cream in the freezer. <laughs> Math was probably not tall enough, so Bell has to reach down, take his bowl form, and then put it in the freezy. Yeah. He doesn't know how this came to be, but he's not he's not gonna question it. To be fair, he probably got a footstool or stood on red, let's be honest. Yeah. Red's there eating like a bowl like a like like a bowl of fruit. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's just having himself a snack. I don't know smack him. He's just, he's, he's just a good boy. He's just a good boy. He's a good boy. Very good boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> Oh, there's this Daisy sitting there. Sweet Daisy. Yeah, and Roxas is just being all cute. Now, I will say, before we get to them heading outside, I'm actually going to pause us for a five-minute break. Because oh. we need to hydrate and refill things and use the restroom. Sounds so like a plan. So we will be right back after these messages. Yeah. Let me see if I... Hang on. Let me get the sound effect. Hang on. Oh, do you have, like, have waiting room music? Because that would be funny. No, I had the we will be right back. Ah, fair enough. That's what I was playing as you were talking, it's just the... Uh... Perfect. Alright, we'll be back, folks. Showtime. So, Mad Lad and Belle wind up heading back out. The soil is still damp and muddy from the rain, and while the rain itself has stopped, the clouds haven't fully disappeared, so hopefully the rain can come back later. Yeah, you don't oh, know yeah. how chaos has stopped the rain, but at the moment, you're just probably like, you know, whatever. In the back of his mind, he's just like, he wants a heavy downpour on his way home, he wants a heavy downpour for the day, he, he likes the miserable weather. It, Munster Morticia behavior. He <laughs> just... Adam Adam's monster's behavior just likes the horrible weather. As long as it's not hot. <laughs> like, he's normally fine with hot because he's a devil and he's immune to it, but, like... Yeah, no. Yeah, if no. it's too hot, the sun can be too bright. Mm-hmm. So he kind of looks around for a place that would be clear enough for them to try this. Yeah, Mad Lad probably points a ways, like, training grounds that way. Hmm. And he heads that way. Slowly. Hey, you guys. He even... hasn't disguised any part of himself, so it looks like he's enjoying the feeling of the mud on his feet, so there is that. He's trying not to enjoy it too much because he knows we're about to wrestle in the mud here soon, but you know. Mm hmm. And Mad Lad leads him to, like, a big open sort of area made for sparring. Mm hmm. Oop, hang on a minute. Uh, let me get a tissue real quick. Something appears to be bleeding. One moment. Just gotta make sure where it is. There we go. Okay, let me just uh, wash my hand up real quick. Mm hmm. Sorry, uh, something on my face started bleeding, so I had to get a tissue and cover that up. Don't worry about it. We all got acne, it happens to the best of us. Indeed. Now, Bell didn't have his trident out when you saw him, and he doesn't have it out now. You can insight check if you want, but it's kind of easy to see, so it's not a very high DC. So you can choose whether to insight or not. Uh, Mad Lad's got a passive insight at 13. He's probably gonna go with that. Yeah, so... Bell puts on something of a composed face, but... Aside from glancing at the fact that you have weapons, there's something in his face that is still slightly 
nervous? On a 13, you can gather he's not nervous about you, but... Even though he got that missing piece of himself back from the vault, and that resulted in him getting the trine back, he hasn't necessarily figured out if he can fully, properly summon it at will again or not. Because the last time he tried, <laughs> it did not go well before that vault escapade. Yeah. So, alright, so 20 paces between us, you and me. Uh-huh. And now that in red move back 20 paces. He does glance at the fact that red is participating. And I'm going to roll him intelligence to see if he knows not to say the specific words I wish. Because he does still have a wish on him. Mm-hmm. <sighs> not that Mad Lad not that Mad Lad knows, of course. Yeah. Oh. Roxas is slowly waking up. Just relax there, buddy. That was a cute little yawn. <laughs> buddy? I'm gonna give him one more intelligence roll to see if this really is where he wastes his wish on accident. I say. Because that was a six plus two. That was an eight. That, I say. <laughs> give, yeah. Definitely have advantage and That's better. That's better. He mentally thinks, well jeez, I wish I had some minions or sidekicks to even this out. He is smart enough to not say these words out loud. Yeah, Chaos was about to bust like get off his like seat that he had in the sky and just oh. like like and hold his like lifts the air like up 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 but he he sighs in relief. <laughs> I would have assumed it would have just been a one on one. You're including the bug? Um, he's my partner. I say we fight together. I'm gonna roll Bell a memory check real quick. I wanna state for the record that was a nat 20, and that was the most bittersweet point to have a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> So, give me a minute. I actually need to pull up his memory table. Mm. Where, wherever I... Hang on. Wamst the, Wamst the French Purple Hell that I decide to uh, pick this up. Also, if somehow French Purple Hell exists as a phrase somewhere, I don't know. I just said it randomly. Please, if it, like, accidentally turns out to be offensive, that's not the intention. <laughs> I, it doesn't feel like it is, but at the same time, I don't know either. <laughs> Well, normally I just say, what in the French-Canadian fuck? But, like, I don't feel like that swear fits here. Yeah. So, firstly, that is going to actually be a plus 10 percent. And I'm going to roll him a d6, so... Hey, Raxus. Oh, yeah, big stretch. Okay, so... Just for... Does he possibly remember how to use that ability? Yay or nay? Well, we'll roll two, actually. This one will be used for the heart. This one will be used for the... If he remembers ability, so... Heart is six. Just five. Rexus. We don't have six. We're gonna need to reroll both of those, unfortunately. Okay, so one spade, four heart. So Bell thinks in it a minute, and when you say that you fight as a duo, that you basically come as a set, and that he's your partner, something in the back of his mind flickers to a different fight, a different scenario. He's used to fighting with partners, and he's used to fighting in company. Though partner in his mind specifically turns back to a particular object head instead of the minions. But there is a moment of bittersweetness in his heart, 
as he's just looking that over. And then a thought of reflection. He goes, Alright, suppose that works. And he's going to try and inspire enough confidence in himself to try and summon the trident, because he's, uh, again, hasn't, hasn't tried it since he got it back. And he's, yeah. a little nervous about, he's a little nervous about suddenly being given a static attack again. Mm -hmm. Even though he won't. It's, unfortunately, it's still left a nervous impact on him. Honey, that was a three. <laughs> Plus six. That's not great. You know, have advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to be nice to the poor guy who is so nervous about fighting before he starts remembering, oh yeah, I do like fighting. It's just the problem of uh, I have horrible trauma around gratuitous violence. Hmm. Yeah. There's a chaos. That's better. Yeah. That's a 15 plus 6. So it's, that's a 21. Just yeah. takes a deep breath. Alright, so 20 paces apart, correct? Yep. We are 20 paces apart, right? Madla looks between him, so I think we're now about 20 paces apart. Bell looks down, and he's gonna reach into his hammer space for a roll of tape, actually. Like a roll of measuring tape, real quick. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have a physical die, 1d10. Let us see. Mm -hmm. I, he hasn't fumbled in forever, I'm so sad. Honestly, fumbles are the best. Like, I, I never get fumbles anymore! I got it like once, and then never again! <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. But... He reaches in and he pulls out a... You know those little metal dispensers of measuring tape? Yeah. And he just sort of whips it out, and it just, with a f really loud rattling noise, you know, this is one of the stiff measuring tapes. Yeah, it just yeah, sort of yeah. Auto extends and measures, and little cartoon text pops up above it that says twenty feet. And it even shows the little footprints next to it for good measure. Just, it's just a cartoon effect. It's not really what the tape does. Yeah. Glances at it, nods. He just flicks his wrist, and the tape just comes rattling back like a rattlesnake. <laughs> Snaps in it. He just puts it back in the hammer space. All right, 20 paces. It's fine. It's fine. This is a more mental assurance to himself of, it's just one. There are not two small porcelain-headed children. <laughs> it is one boy and his very big, very easily crushed bug. It's <laughs> fine. You can beat a small child. You're not going to be embarrassed and you're not going to cry if you lose. It's fine. Now, how do I... And you see him kind of stand there and think for a minute. And he kind of looks at his left hand. And he looks it over for a minute. Kind of tests the finger positions to see what feels most familiar. And holding his fingers like he's about to snap them feels the most familiar. Did I get my finger? Huh. I'll, I'll deal with that later. I think I clawed my finger on accident. Oopsie doopsie. It's alright. Happens to the best of us. Anyway. Mm -hmm. And... Madla, you don't need an insight to see. He's kind of still nervous as he's putting his fingers into the snapping position. You know, into the finger snap position, not into the breaking bones position. Yeah. Because it looks like he's bracing himself for if something happens. Like, he's almost expecting something to hit. But you, you don't know what because you weren't there for it. Yeah. Mad Lad does look of... a bit confused, but he just stays quiet. Takes a deep breath, and, uh... I don't... The sad thing is, I don't think I picked up a snapping finger sound effect. Tragic. All I don't right. need it, so it's fine. And... Snaps. Now, the thing is, normally when it comes to someone based on the Cuphead Devil summoning a trident or pitchfork, usually it just pops up in a puff of smoke. However, Bell is based, while he's based on both versions, he's more based on the game version, on the original version of the Cuphead Devil. So, mm -hmm. from Don't Deal with the Devil. Yeah. And that trident comes out of him, rather than out of the ground, because during his transition to his last phases, he pulls out his skeleton out of his skin, and the trident goes limp, too. 
<laughs> and anytime he shapeshifts, the trine just comes back out of his hand, like it just melds to him. So it's just part of his person. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of sound effect to it as it materializes. And I'm going to roll a coin flip to see how he sums it this time, actually. So, odds is it, it's out of his hand. Evens, it's the, you know... Mm -hmm. And you watch as the trident just magically manifests. Yeah, obvious sparkle eyes in that lad's eyes. He's like, ooh, the trident. <laughs> or is the pitchfork? It is a pitchfork, but technically the way it is depicted is based more on a trident. Fair enough. Is so, pitchfork, trident, same thing. The trident is just a fancier pitchfork. In the oh, I, oh, I know it is. That, that's Mad Lad speaking, but I know this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> My mistake. No, you're... Understandable. Have a nice day. I'm so used to doing voices that I can tell when I go out of character, but if other people use, like, their normal voices, it's like, please tell me which, if this is the player or the character. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. I, I try to differentiate Mad Lad's voice, but sometimes it's hard because little kid voice. <laughs> that is fair, and you can't really do a voice mod or anything for making yourself sound like a kid, so it's just a matter of vocal practice. Yeah. But Ooh, and it, a little but I need to get myself more iced tea. The ice yeah. has melted a piece about it. But that's not a now thing. That's a Yeah, I say usually is it usually I can do pretty well, but sometimes it does slip. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, ooh, try ooh, trident is a and is a like the trident or the pitchfork. Mm hmm And Bell kinda looks it over for a minute and he hasn't been taken by static or anything. Nothing's shocking him. He's not glitching. He knows the AI was dealt with, and if you want context as to that, I would recommend the Codebreakers episodes, though Tana still needs to post the Codebreakers episodes is the issue. Because mm -hmm. there are still two that have not been posted yet. I need to remind Tala on that. Mm -hmm. I understand things are busy, though, so not a bad thing. But, you know, it would help with context if they actually had the, had the finale episodes. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be four parts, and it got to six instead. Yeah. Just insert, insert the Bill Wirt sound effect of, How did this happen? <laughs> I mean, I know how it happened. It's because I let them enjoy role-playing, and that's not a bad thing, but still. Ah! Mm -hmm. Pain. Anguish. Suffering. I, I like the way that it went. It's just pain, anguish, suffering. Anyway, he kind of looks it over for a minute, and then takes it, and it... Yeah, it feels like part of himself. It just... The metal feels nice and natural to him, as opposed to other folks who might think it feels unnatural, because it is an extension of him and his magic, and it's also, you know, made of the same hellish material as him. So he just feels it over, and... You do kind of see him smile a bit. It's not necessarily the fully malicious smile, you know, but it's a start. Mostly just relief of, oh, thank... Mm -hmm. Thank freak out. Why did I say freak above board? I, am I trying to monitor my own swearing? Hello? My Baby. You can curse. You can curse. I know we're PG-13, but like, you can swear. Mm -hmm. It's in the rating. Hey. He's just glad that fucking worked. Because the alternative was him still having problems. Feels it over. And... He's gonna take a deep breath. Well... If you're going to give yourself assistance, suppose it would only be fair if I had to be even play a feeling a bit. Hmm? Um... And he... He taps the pitchfork on the ground, and I'm going to roll... 1d6. As a flurry of imps appear, roll initiative. <laughs> he has remembered how to summon minions. Bad news for you. Mm-hmm. That is a... This is for similar to the other one. This is a low roll for Mad Lad for a initiative, so... That's gonna mm -hmm. be a 12 for him. As Mad Lad looks at the, as the, at the little imps and he's like, Ah! I see. But at the same time, Mad Lad's like, also, like, low-key excited, even with the basic insight. It's like, ooh, this is definitely, like, what the devil would do. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm making sure... Okay, so... 
Your initiative is 12, yes? Yes. And Bell's is... So that is... 15. He gets to go first. And I also have to roll for the imps, because now they have their own part, part in initiative. Hee <laughs> hee. So he gets a 15, because he rolled a 12. Nice. And you watch as, out of familiar Toonie Infernal Smoke, four Cuphead game imps appear. And if you don't know how the imps look in the Cuphead game, which C makes sense, they look different than the traditional D&D &D imps, in that they are essentially itty-bitty guys with wings... And very big eyes and very tiny bodies, and Hon that is it. Honestly, they're adorable. Just Google Cuphead imps, and it's they are so goddamn. They are so goddamn cute, and I'm so sad nobody draws the guys. Like everybody loves henchmen. Don't get me wrong, henchmen's good, but like they're little guys. Indeed, <laughs> it's just little guys. Mm hmm. So I'll, I'll actually also post one in the audience chat because it, nobody's here yet. But like. <laughs> I wish I could describe them, but my beautiful baby boys. Actually, I can't describe. They could be just. I have to put this spoiler because one of the people in our server has a sensitivity to religious imagery. Yeah, those little fellows. So and I need to actually pull up the imp step block real quick, so give me a hot minute. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> so, imp. Please tell me they have only one stat block. Most of them have different ones. Like, most monsters, if they get re-released, they have multiple stat blocks. Which means you have to pick and choose. I think they're only- I think there's only one of them? There's only one imp yet yeah, in the monster's manual. Thank, thank gods they didn't decide to revamp, revamp them in any way. Yeah, thank god. So, I believe... Now, 5, 10, 15, 20... There's gotta be four squares between you. I I'm making the battle map as we speak, so don't worry about it. Ah, uh, you're fine. Uh, imp, 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 Ah, there they are. So, a one, a two, a three. Sorry, a Tootsie Roll commercial. Tootsie Roll commercial bit. For all those who know, no. I I kind of miss the Tootsie Roll commercial. I'm gonna be honest. It it's a, and... it 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 definitely has some nostalgia to it. Okay, so initiative is plus your Dex modifier, right? Yes. Okay, so they get a plus three to that. So let me roll in the bot. So that's a 23. The imps go first. Now, as we hit things off, you see from puffs of smoke appear these little blue creatures. They just look like little guys. Such small guys with these big ears that are about as big as their tiny round heads. Eyes that nearly make up the entirety of their head that are big and gold and black like bells. These itty bitty horns and this big old pointy pointy nose. And their wings aren't really traditional like bat wings. Mm -hmm. They have the rubber hose arms and the legs and they got little purple slippers on their feet. But... Their arms are webbed to give them sail-like wings, and they still flap like bats. So, the imps, first and foremost, appear, pause a moment to take in the surroundings and see the threat, realize, oh, we were called, they turn, they see Bill, and immediately you hear, you understand Infernal, so, you hear a resounding chorus of, PAPA! As they immediately flock to him and flap onto his face and just cling. Mad Lad ha has to cover a hand to his mouth, trying not to laugh. Bell, his face is three quarters hidden by the fact that these imps have just flapped onto and just splutted themselves on his face. Just 
splattered themselves, just absolutely they flattened themselves like a pancake. And kind of stands there a minute, just... There's a moment he looks briefly confused, and I'm going to roll him a memory check real quick, because <laughs> the whole of Papa! Excuse me! <laughs> I want to see if he can basically put two and two together, that the reason he had all the imps and minions photos in his wallet was because he considered them family, and it was mutual. Oh. No, honey! He does not. Oh, He doesn't fully recall, however, there is still that vague feeling of fondness. And he just sort of stands there, but it just reaches up and pats them. And they are just- you can hear so much chattering in Infernal, mostly sounding worried of, Where have you been? We've been worried sick! Where were you? And he just has to pry them off in an Infernal goat. Look, I, I can explain later. I'm sorry. Very nice to see you. Uh, we have a target? And he points to you, and the moment passes as all these little googly-eyed guys turn to you. <laughs> And you are very briefly reminded of Roquefort's dinner critters, because in spite of them having googly eyes, that is a predatory look in their eye. <laughs> dun dun dun! <laughs> oh, target. Got it, got it, gotcha, gotcha. Don't you worry, gotcha. It just <laughs> echoes of gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> and the imps are going to go ahead and. Yeah! So, they're gonna go ahead, and they're just gonna go and... Yeah, they're just gonna assault you real quick. So, they have enough flight speed according to the stat block, gotta make sure. 40 flight speed, they can definitely close the gap. Oh yeah. So, two of them converge on you. And... Two of them converge on... Your sweet, darling, beloved Red. <laughs> and I need to actually see if I can grab an appropriate token for Red. Because again, I'm still making the little bad map so you know where you are. Yeah, yeah. So Red is a big old bug, yeah? He's a big old stag beetle. He's a- he's just a big boy. He's just a big boy. Big boy. Uh, is he medium or large? Uh, he's large. Okay, so he's like mount sized. Okay. I am going to use a token, and I'm going to screenshot this for you. I don't need you- if you see what it's called, and- You're fine. No <laughs> questions. No I'm not spoilers. Gonna, no, I'm not questioning anything. Basically, I am using my uh, Ravenloft little server to host the blank battle maps. That's so fair. So, at the moment- So, I'm going to go ahead and post it in the audience- chat. No, right. uh, the roll zone. Can I post it in the roll zone? Nah, audience See, chat's fine. I was gonna say, roll zone would be okay, too. But may get confused, so audience may be better. Eh. Yeah, fair. And I'm just gonna spoil this because they're they're just little fiendish imps on the yeah. screen. The sad thing is, I do like a lot of the art for the Ravenloft module, but the problem is, aside from how they draw the Vistani, it's also a lot of how they depict certain things. So the monsters are cool, the people are not. Yeah, yeah. But we're not we're, we're not here to complain about Curse of Strahd. We're here for a fuss. Indeed. And the imps have their orders. Now the imps thankfully can't multi-attack. Mm. But they can sting you, is the issue. So, mm -hmm. there's going to be two sting attacks toward you. So that's going to be 2 to 20 plus 5. So, give me a minute. And I'm going to roll these individually. So. Neither of those hit! They roll the exact same number, by the way, which I find funny. So, 8 plus 5, 13 does not hit, noted. And there's gonna be two more stings towards your lovely, darling, beloved Red. Yes. Oh! Both of those hit. Both, both of those hit, and I get to roll the funny crit table. I was gonna say, uh -oh. one of them's by one of them. One of them caught by one, because... Red's AC is 17, and yeah, that's a nat 20. 
Okay, so I get to roll a D100 for- They just wanted to impress their papa so much! <laughs> they are just so happy to have him back! Oh, yeah! That one was just like, oh, you want us to attack? Sure thing, sure thing, boss, sure thing, pops, whatever you say, whatever you say! One of them just wants to impress him so much, they crit. <laughs> so that is a... Well, that normally would be applicable if Red had anything to be disarmed of. Yeah. Red's just a big beetle. Do you think I should re-roll it, or just have it be just the double damage die? Double damage die. Okay, so... Red's the only one who took any hits. We're gonna roll the normal sting first. So, you need to make a con save. And I'm already gonna roll, because you already take poison damage, but there's gonna be more poison damage if you fail. So make me a con save with red. Con save with red. I need to check something. Okay, so 1d4 plus 3 plus 3d6. Okay. It's de it's on depending on what the he's using at the time, and it's acid, not poison. Mm-hmm. So con save. Eh. What is your con, dear boy? Ah, that ain't gonna be good. That's gonna be a seven. That's gonna be a seven. Seven fails, so I get to roll you three d six more poison damage. Mm -hmm. Does red take poison damage? Is he immune or does no? He no, I say it depends on what he summoned as. He is a he was summoned as acid, not poison. Okay, so the first thing is you are taking two piercing. Well, five piercing technically. It's two plus three, and then you are taking twelve poison damage to start, and then I have to roll you three to six more poison damage. So... I forgot- I forgot the imps had a pretty decent sting. And it rolled bare minimum, but he tried. I was gonna say, what would be the total, then, so... Oh, wait, this is- okay, this is the normal one. The crit comes next. Okay. So... Three... okay, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. So that's twenty-one total damage. Red's already down. <laughs> that was... non-lethal, thankfully, so Red is just pew! Red is just put to sleep. Yeah, say, <laughs> red is a red basically just falls say falls down and is to say he turns his he turns spectral again and goes back into Mad Lad's amulet. And he's like ah, you did your best, Red. Now since that means he not got knocked out before the second attack hit, should that crit count for Mad Lad instead? Or should I re roll it? Probably re roll it. Okay. Unless so, it's just a, or Ted, or unless we want to just say it's just a miss because he originally was headed towards Mad Lad, but that is a crit. Yeah, just re-roll for Mad Lad since it is a crit. Okay. Yeah. So one d twenty plus five. Seventeen. Does not hit Mad Lad. <sighs> Why does the small child have eighteen AC? I don't understand. I mean, I do understand, but, uh... Man, it... I do feel bad he couldn't keep the crit, actually. That that feels kind of sad, but we're gonna skip past it. I mean, that technically would be a second attack on a creature who would normally do one attack. <laughs> eh. So, it's the imp's turn. The imp's turn is over. Now it's Belle's turn. So, Bell is going to hmm. He's going to aim the trident towards you and fire off a guiding bolt. Just you know, you know, cock the trident like a shotgun, do the traditional devil blast, you know how it goes. Yeah. Actually, hang on. Do I have the I had one. Hang on. Where's the... Here we go. <laughs> nice. There we go. So that's going to be Guiding Bolt. And that is 1d20 plus 6. Okay. And 
And we're going to use Favored by the Gods, which will add 2d4 to the attack, because a 16 will not hit you. Yeah. Twenty-two. Uh, twenty-two hits. All right. So you are going to take forty-six radiant damage, and the next attack roll made against you before the end of Bell's next turn will have advantage. Mm-hmm. And for his bonus action, he's going to inspire one of the imps, <laughs> particularly the one that did the crit or mm -hmm. would have done the crit. That is 16 radiant damage total. All right. And Bell, eh, he's gonna start taking to the air and fly to the trees for partial cover. Thanks. And if I recall partial cover correctly, I believe that is disadvantage on a hit. Let me check. Um, Thanks. it's plus on an AC. Cover. Okay, so walls, trees, creatures, those obstacles. Three degrees of cover. So targets behind multiple sources of cover. Only the most protected degree of cover applies. Uh, let's see. If the tree, if the target's behind a creature that gives half cover, and a tree shape that gives three quarters cover, these are entire big jungle trees. So, would you say that's three quarters cover or total cover? Because I doubt that's half cover. Uh, probably three quarters. Okay, so he's gonna have a plus five to his AC and deck saves. Mm-hmm. You're up. You have four imps on you, and your boy's already gone down. You are also glowing with a very, very bright target. Yeah. You, you've got a funny little cartoon sticker on you that says, Hit me! <laughs> Bad lad has to think for a moment. It's like a quick think. He needs to get out of this. And he... Knows that the imps are going to be a problem. He say he was going to have Red help take care of them, but that ain't happening right now. Yeah, Red immediately got clowned on. <laughs> Funny, time repeats again. As Mad Lad then decides to do something, and he smiles as he casts Fog Cloud. Right where he is. So, within 20 feet of him, there is heavy fog, and the imps can't see shit. Alright, so if they try to attack you, it'll be disadvantage. Gotcha. And Mad Lad is going to use his, is a, use his action to, well, use his movement, I should say, to get out of the I'm fog cloud. To. Okay, so that'll be four attacks of opportunity at disadvantage. Mm. Well, no, actually, the first one is straight. Because, again, you still- You are still glowing with Guiding Bolt. So but I think that only works for- one. But I think that only works for- No, wait, no. No? No, no. No, that no, 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 no. I, I say, I had to remember for a second how it worked. Yes, the first one would be straight, the others would be disadvantage. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say. No, no, I say, I just I say, it's been a, I say, Guiding Bolt. Yeah. 23. I mean, that does, that does hit him. That does hit him, get stung, motherfucker. You need to make me another con save. Wait, are these attacks, I say, magical? What? I say, are these, I say, are the same, no, they, I say no, we're not gonna worry this about is this. Their, this is their stingers. All this right. is their physical stingers. It's a non it's a non magical attack. Uh I say continue on. I'm just thinking. Uh roll me a con save, please. Will do. But you are gonna still be taking fourteen damage regardless. 
so. That's cocked. Okay, so that's gonna be an 11. 11 makes it, so you are going to take half as much of the next damage. Alright. So you take the full 14, but the next damage I'm rolling, you take half of. Okay? Alright. I- I'm just reading the stinger as it's written. Yeah, yeah. That wouldn't have been very much to begin with. I'll say that's three or four. Uh, it, I think it would be three. So you take a total of down. So yeah, total of 17. Yeah, that ain't good. And the other three are going to try and sting you with disadvantage. So. <laughs> well, a 21 hits, but that's also, there's also a crit in there. <laughs> Yeah, let's say twenty both would hit. I'm just rolling the others first. Fifteen would not hit. Okay, only one of the other ones hits you. So, make me another con save. And you're going to be all right. That's nineteen on the die. Okay, so the first damage you're taking, you're taking this fully, is twenty damage. Yeah, Mad Lad's already down. The fog disappears, ah. and he's his, and he's face first on the ground. <laughs> he just got stung and just s- feels tired. Feels a little snoozy. It's more. It's, it's, it's more like it, there's just like beast, like giant bee stings on him. He's just like, uh. <laughs> the fog dissipates, and the imp. The one imp that got the finishing <laughs> blow on you. Briefly does a triumphant pose in the air before turning back for approval with these really, really big shiny eyes of Did I do good? Did I do good? And Bell, he's got his he's got his trident ready like he was gonna try another shot. But he perks up and sees that the imps have done his work for him, which is traditional for the devil. And you actually see the way he brightens up and goes, Oh, oh, you did such a good job! Who are my sweetest little monsters? And he actually comes out and the imps immediately flock him like a flock of butterflies. He just starts- he starts cooing to them a bunch. Even though he doesn't fully remember them and they are- This is normal behavior for them, so they are sucking it up. Especially the one that got the last one was like schmoozing the- smoozing the attention. Loving this to pieces. The- Oh, there are, oh, wait, yeah, there's a small boy on the ground. <laughs> and then walks over and looks down at the boy covered in uh, imp stinks. The imps also look over, and you can vaguely hear the infernal in one of them of... Man, didn't really put up too much, huh? Yeah, I was expecting to maybe get shot. It, it is like a couple of the imps just like having a little infernal exchange. It's not meant to be insulting, they're just kind of... Thinking on it? Mad Lad in his mind is like thinking, Fuck. Ne- next time, bring area of effect spells. The- you get more of those when you level up. I don't think rangers can change their spells on the fly. They can upon level up, but that's it. Yeah. He thought he was so smart well- with being fog cloud. Like, it was a... It was a risky maneuver, but he was going to take all those attacks anyways. Might as well try to get them all at disadvantage. <laughs> but now he's just like, he couldn't even get off one shot. and He's more angry than sad, just because like he can't even show off how strong he is. And he's just still Bell- face down on the ground. <laughs> yeah, Bell is just going to kneel down next to him. And not where his knees are in the mud, he just kind of squats. And he's going to reach down carefully, and I, and I say carefully with all the attention of like a cat picking up a kitten by the scruff, take Mad Lab by the hair and quietly lift his face up from the mud. You I tell- assume your face is just caked in mud. Caked in mud. So, how did you enjoy the fight? Mad Lab is quiet for a second before, like... Like a dog, like, shaking his head and getting the mud off his face. Like, there's still, like, mud. But it's just a, it's not, like, covering his face now. It's just, like, 
it, it, he shakes it off and Bell releases your head on instinct because that's getting mud on his face and your face plops back into the mud. Mad Lad get like gets up like gets up and just sits on his ground and like uses his hand to get the mud off his face. You play dirty and use your they say use your imps as cover. I mean I gotta respect that. That's true devil form. You had a bug. Did you expect me to handle the 2v1? I mean, is a is a mad lad looks at, say looks at his enemy and is just like, I mean, fair, but at the same time, I still couldn't even show off what my is a couldn't even show off my stunt because of how many the small swarm you have. I mean, it's just four of them. Those stingers pack a punch. Yeah, so I noticed. And one of the imps, uh, one of the tinier imps just sticks their tongue out, but Bill gives a slightly scolding look, and they just... The tongue stays out like a blip, but they, they no longer look quite as, uh, quite as teasing. How about we get you inside, we get you cleaned up, and you can come with me and go shopping. Will that make you feel better? Mad mm. Lad wants to say, wants to say he wants one more round, but he made a deal like, mm. fine. Bell smiles and he just reaches down, and even though you are covered in mud, he is going to pick you up. Give me kind of one what? second, though. Hmm. He goes, he, looks at one of the training, he goes to look at one of the training dummies that is nearby. Uh-huh. And he's just gonna silently go over there, takes a deep breath, gets out his pistol that he was going to use. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, his, 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 yeah, that's a 20, that's a 21 to hit. And he's using his violent shot ability, and <laughs> this is a training dummy. You see, like, this looks like a pirate pistol. This looks like a flintlock pistol that's like, oh, that's a cool-looking gun. It's a very nice. He seems to be, like, taking way care of it. And the moment he shots it, the dummy explodes. Bell watches this for a minute. The imps flinch and kind of flutter behind Bell to hide. Just to say, like, that was a, a violent shot. And Mad Lad smiles again, takes a deep breath. Okay, I feel better now. I'm almost glad I didn't give you the chance to try that on me. Can't imagine what that'd do to my fur. I mean, don't they just go back to hell if they're- if they poof? I meant me, not them. Not them. They're fine. I was talking about my fur. Look, it's been a rough week for me, and I mean, I'm not gonna ask because I made a promise, I made a deal, but still, I need to get off some anger. I tell you what. How about we get you cleaned up and go shopping, and we'll see how I feel after the fact, all right? All right, great! And chaos just pops up behind them, and and then he's like, "But you don't need to worry about going inside to clean off." As he claps his hands and remember all that rainwater that suddenly disappeared, <laughs> it just comes down like a waterfall. <laughs> Bell is probably now looking at a very looking at a very soggy boy. You're both extremely soggy. <laughs> Bell's, because Bell is essentially a wet animal guy, he looks like if you got like a cat or another animal wet where the fur is most of the appearance. So he looks, he still, he still looks fat, but he doesn't look as big as usual. And he just kind of has to, he doesn't even look mad. He just kind of, yeah. Yeah, he kind of enjoys how heavy the rain is falling back down again. <laughs> Even though it's a waterfall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
just so we're clear, I want it to be raining by the time we get back. I was looking forward to the downpour today. It is a. It is still like water falling right now. Oh, don't worry. It'll still be raining. It'll. It's just this is all the built up water that I had stored in the clouds. Understandable. He's saying this as he is just being poured on by a bucket of water. That, like, this is still like a waterfall. Like, it's just like. It's still going. <laughs> yeah. It's like a curtain. It's like a curtain. It's like a rain cloud. Yeah, it's a curtain. <laughs> He's like, and Madeline's like, who's this guy? Oh, this is chaos. I mean, he does look chaotic. He's a, uh, you're a god, right? If I recall correctly? Yes, I'm a god. Yeah, apparently he's a god. Ha! Huh. Were you the reason why there was tons of pizzas out that one time? And Chaos just smiles, yes, indeed. And Valad just squints at him, he's like, that was torture, but, I mean, we eventually got rid of it all. I mean, there's an entire region of cake, so I can't imagine it was too much torture going through a place made of pizza. It was the worst toppings! <laughs> oh, boo-hoo, the little boy can't be picky when it comes to his toppings. Aww. You try biting into a, a pizza that has rocks on it. He glances over to Chaos for a minute and goes, You couldn't go with anything edible? Really? Oh, there were ones that edible. He just got very unlucky at times. Hmm. Well, that's on him, then. Hey! Give me a minute to go ahead and just get some other stuff set up and leave a note saying we're going shopping for a bit so nobody gets worried. I mean... Okay. I mean, I don't... I only live here, like... Rarely part time, but all right. Well, I, well, I haven't seen you much around here, but the issue is me disappearing, so nobody gets worried about me. Fair enough. And he's gonna go ahead. He's gonna head on in, and of course he's gonna shake himself dry, even though he knows it's, you know, it poops. Shaka, 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 shaka. He does it not in the dog way. He does it in the cat way. You know, just the you know. Like, he shakes off his different limbs, just a little flick, little flick, little flick, shakes the fur, little flick. Hee <laughs> hee. And of course, he dries himself off with a towel, fluffs his fur up a bit. Kind of reaches a paw up to his head, and I'm gonna roll another int check to see if he can catch himself. <sighs> yeah! He briefly reminisces in the fact that even for being covered in fur, there's not a lot on his head. Like, much at all. Because, again, the devil is very simple shapes. But there's a moment he thinks back to his youth where he did have a lot more hair slash fur. And, in fact, the fur on his head probably made him look a little closer to Elvis, and he kind of remarks on that and misses it. Well, Elvis, friends, it, it, was, a it was a nice curly updo. But... He reminisces on that for a moment, but he's smart enough not to say, I wish I had hair back. <laughs> and then he, of course, gets a sticky note, writes down, makes sure that his handwriting is clear, because even though his handwriting is some of the fanciest, some people can't read cursive. Sticks it on the reception desk to the treehouse where someone can see it. Picks up his bag and heads back out. All right, would you like a little healing before we go, or do you think you're going to recover as we go? All right. Mad lad size. Give me the heals. And Bell is going to bring up the potions he was bringing from inside, so you're just going to carefully drink yourself back up to health, though the stings are still going to be there. Yeah. So just, you refill your hit points? Not, not Reds. Reds is going to stay asleep for the day. Yeah, unfortunately. Even if you do get a match, too, it's just gonna be you and him. Mm-hmm. Sorry, if you hear me make the occasional ow noises, uh, just having some acne problems over here, don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. So... Do you think we're going to need to disguise ourselves for this outing? Considering he gestures to himself and then the chaos. That's up to you, darling. 
don't. And he holds up a finger and with a deadly serious face goes, do not call me darling. You are not permitted to call me darling. Understood? He holds up his, his hand paws like, all right, all right. Chaos, you at least know enough to know that that is distinctly a nickname that Percy uses. He is the only one allowed. <laughs> so, like, it, you you don't even need to roll a check. You just, even though Belle doesn't fully recall it, you, you can get where the instinct comes from. And there's almost like a grin on his face. At least you remember that part. He tilts his head, chooses not to ask. And... You know what? I'm going to roll to see if he does decide to disguise himself or not, because where I do plan on having him go, it's not going to matter if he's disguised, but it is going to matter in front of other people. Yeah, I also, I will say, we probably wouldn't have to have a second fight, because, yeah, I have, I say, I have another FPS that's going to be at 530, so, <laughs> Pro mm -hmm. is a, probably going to end it somewhat soonish, so, yeah. Soon-ish, yeah. yeah. Though I will say, we do need to get ourselves a drink real quick, so while I'm rolling dice... We'll be right back after these messages. So, we're gonna go ahead and... Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and have Bell disguise himself, because the devil does not need to be seen with a small boy. And he's recalled how to use a shapeshifter to disguise himself without means of expending a spell slot. By that I mean he's just remembered his innate shape-changing ability, so you know. <laughs> And he turns into a sleek, pretty-looking guy. Granted, his hair is thinning, and he looks... It's not necessarily fully sunburnt, but... It does look like he spent a good portion of time out in the sun, or out somewhere tropical, in spite of the fact he is more a nocturnal type. Fair enough. But his face is round, not... It's round, but it's almost soft-looking. You would almost argue that in spite of his age, it almost looks like a baby face complexion, in spite of the fact that he has those very familiar yellow and black eyes. And his medium brown skin is offset by his lovely dark red hair, which is slicked back underneath of a... You know, underneath of a nice little... Nah, he's not gonna wear a hat. We're gonna go with the umbrella. He's just dressed in all black, very nice, medium brown skin, slicked back red hair. He's got that same look of trouble on his face. The big pointy nose, the crooked smile. The only thing that really sets him apart are his eyes. And you could kind of argue that's just a tune look. I need to roll to see whether he stays in the Warnian style or not, though. Odds he does, even he actually goes back to Rubber Hose. <gasps> yeah, he stays Warnian, so this is just a very... a nice-looking middle-aged Warnian guy, with a bit of a gut, with a decent gut, a thick figure, but nice black clothes and a sleek umbrella. Sort of, he's actually very Gomez looking, if we're gonna be honest. <laughs> Fair enough. Does Chaos disguise himself? Chaos, to say, tries to inertly jog a few memories as he goes actually back to one of his original forms. One that Belle would know of. A man that is a, say, middle-aged sort of man, but, say, brown hair with a matching sort of brown, say, sort of suit. With a little, say... Not much, I say, no beard, but there is a moustache. Well, that's a crit since you decided to do something familiar and you rolled with advantage, so... On a nat 20, yeah, you change and you do see a look of recognition on Bell. And for a split second, for a split second for the sake of the audience, his memory goes back to a different life. One, unfortunately, before transition. And also, unfortunately, before... An untimely demise we shall not discuss here. But one of a rather morose looking young lady of a similar age to him, with the same color of skin tone and the same curly hair, 
who's put herself into a suit and is busy schmoozing it up with a couple folks while he stays in the crowd nearby and just subtly influences a few more misfortunes to happen. There, it's a very distinct, there are a few images that come up, but there's a look of, oh, we have met. A lot, actually. Huh. Chaos smiles, saying, sort of, say, very mischievous smile, but it's a friendly mischievous smile. It's like, oh, I hoped you rec would recognize this form. I mean, it's an improvement from your current one. He says that with a joking smile. And chaos does a joking oh, how rude of you i could i say my for my current form is spectacular and chaotic just like myself oh it's just as chaotic as one of those pattern suits i know oh come on you gotta have a little fun every now and again with fashion <laughs> he smiles but moving madlet so madlet can stay under the umbrella mm -hmm. you head to the market for the most part, most people are staying inside, and people that normally would be manning a tent are staying in their tents. Most people are basically keeping closed shop today since the rain is that heavy. There are some places that are open, some tents that are available, but Bell kind of walks past those. He's not looking for those. As he's looking around for a place for what he's curious about looking for, and he's been thinking about for a while since he keeps rereading the letter, that corny, cheesy letter that just keeps making him feel fluttery, <laughs> A particular tent catches the eye. It is a rather large tent, but it's kind of well concealed by the fact it's it looks as plain as the other tents, even if it's a little bit bigger, and it's hidden behind a good few of them. But when Belle pauses and looks at the sign, you do in fact see there is a hand-painted, hand-carved wooden sign designating the place. And it says, Welcome to the Tsar's Bazaar for the Bazaar. <laughs> and Bell pauses for a moment. He thinks back on the directions he was given and thinks, ah, yeah, that probably sounds like a place. Because he was looking for a different little magical shop, but this one, by the mentions of it, it sounds like it's similar function, so he, you watch as he goes between the tents that you're supposed to be looking at and sort of starts heading for a back alley kind of situation closer to the tree line. And Mad Lad and and Mad Lad follows him, and so does Chaos. Chaos, do a little bit more grand. Mad Lad is just like, ugh. He, he's not the big, Mad Lad's not, as a child, he's not the biggest fan of shopping unless it's like, what is this niche interest? Ah, that's the one instance I can't relate to Mad Lad because I grew up loving garage sailing with my Nana. Can't relate. Yeah. Can't relate. Yeah, I love garage sales myself, but Mad Lad's occasions, like, unless it has to do what I like, I usually don't like shopping. And when you look, it looks like the place is still open. There is still a single lantern inside that is basically giving a warm glow to the place. And you can see that there are some shelves with strange antiquities and odd objects here and there. Belle parts open the curtain and peeks in. Excuse me, would this place still be open? <laughs> and you kind of see a pair of elvish looking ears perk up. And from behind what appears to be a, you know, movable sort of counter situation, a table you can pick up and put back down, up sits what you think looks like an Alondron. He's got this bright, peachy, almost orangish pink skin, and this bright, fiery orange hair that's pulled back into a bun. And in spite of the weather, he is wearing these very light and airy clothes. He's... I actually have a token for him, fun fact. Oh, Let me nice. get it for you. He's not very tall. That is the thing you know. He's very personable in that he's about five foot or so. He is not a big guy. He's very lean and very... Almost a little too friendly looking in that he's got a persistent smile to his face. And it's a smile in his eyes. And give me just a moment. Is this the right one? Yes, it is. Introducing... Nice. Bizarre. And when he looks back, he's got these bright, almost eerily blue eyes. And here's a question. Does Chaos have true sight? Yes, he does. This is not an Aladrin. This is a Kitsune. 
And that, it is specifically a kitsune that doesn't have all nine tails yet, but this is clearly one that's been around the block because he's got about six. Yeah. Not, say, not old, but at the same time, not young. He's been around the block a few times. Mm-hmm. So you get the jib that the shopkeeper is a kitsune immediately, but this magical disguise holds up to any of their other inspection, and Bell doesn't have his true sight active at the moment, so he, you know. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't have true sight 24-7, at least not mm -hmm. right now. So, you know, this is this is a funny short-looking elf with these lovely hand-painted nails, and he's got earrings that are mismatched. Well, hey, of course we're still open for new customers. Come on in, come on in. Have, come on, have a look around. Haven't gotten too much activity today. I think people are a little too scared of the rain, personally. Well, it would... Say, oh, it makes sense. Not everyone is fond of the rain as you. <laughs> well, if you head out in the bad weather, you can expect to find some fair rewards for it. And he holds out a hand over the counter for a shake, which Belle takes. You can call me the Tsar. Nice to meet you, Mr... Mr. Ville. Let's go with Mr. Ville. Mr. Ville. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And, uh, I don't think you need to introduce me too much to your friends unless they would like to. Is this your, uh, is this your son over here? Oh, uh, no. He's a child of a friend of mine. He's babysitting ah. me. Ah. Taking him garage sailing while babysitting him, huh? Classic, classic trick. And, uh, this is Neighbor. Ah! And what would your name be, Neighbor? Hm? You can call me Q. Q. Well, ain't that cute. Eh? <laughs> Not as cute as yourself. Ah, oh, stop it, you. Anyway. No, no, uh, you can... What's gonna do in the market? Oh. They say, no, no. Let's just say, let's just say, <laughs> you're a little bit foxy to me. Ah, uh, stop. And he fans a hand, and when his eyes close briefly and look at you, the one eye that's closed, the way they close does look like the way that, you know, cartoon fox eyes close. And that, and... So, little traits. Little yeah. Things. And this, and chaos just smiles. Anyway, what can I do you lovely people in the market for? You looking around? You looking for something specific? What what, what do you want? Well, actually, I was hoping to see... Uh, it seems like you've got some magical curiosities on sale. Yep, magical curiosities and antiquities for the uh, discerning eye. Now, of course, I don't always know what I pick up, but I know they gotta get somewhere. So, what you looking for? Well, there was one I'd particularly heard about, but I was going to check one of the actual shops for it. Would you happen to have paper birds on sale? Paper birds! Ooh, you thinking of sending mail to somebody? Perhaps. It's always good to have it on hand. Yeah, let me go ahead and check real quick. Uh, paper birds should be over in the stationery section. And he... He almost looks shorter than you thought because he actually seems to step off of a footstool. <laughs> because clearly he's trying to reach something, and he walks around the counter and starts perusing. And yeah, this little shop, the way it looks, it's kind of meant to be like almost like one of those stereotypical Chinese antique shops, you mm -hmm. would think. You know, the kind that they're warmly lit by lanterns, and they clearly have all these worldly artifacts. Mm -hmm. It's just in a tent, though. And let me take a sip. And you can, in fact, see that where he goes, there are... It's not necessarily magical scrolls, but this is clearly a stationary section with some writing implements, and there do appear to be some different uh, things there. You also do see that on his person, uh, very closely strapped to him, and Chaos can at least see that it's like almost attached to him at the hip, yeah. appears to be a sheathed deck of cards. Chaos. Which he keeps in his mesh. Yeah, and that it's not obviously noticeable, right? Mm-hmm. Chaos does not say anything, but he has thoughts of what they are, what he has in his pocket. All right, so how many boxes are you looking for, cuz? Because we got a few of them here. Oh, uh, well, how many would you have, sir? 
Well, uh, and he kind of counts, and I'm gonna roll him a d6. We got about uh, five boxes here, various numbers in there. Now, of course, not all of them are full, and I didn't want to move all of them between boxes, because that would feel unfair. Imagine you get one of these boxes, and you get more than somebody else. All because I moved them into another box to make it full. That wouldn't be right to me. Oh, I can understand that much. And give me a minute to pull up the paper bird. And I actually need to pull up the DM's guide, because I do have a price guide! Uh, one of these Bell is just getting with points, so... Mm -hmm. This is technically flavoring for something he's already got. Alright. So, uh, is it in... Hang on. Down time, down time, down time, down time. Down time? Down time sounds right. 127, I think. Because there was an area for selling magic items. And I was going to use that for the basis of prices, because I know Ike wants to keep it strictly gold, and we are doing that, but like, I still want to price it reasonably you yeah. know it's it's really just hard but fair enough okay so uncommon the paper bird boxes are an uncommon wondrous item and the base selling point for the uncommon magic items is usually 500 gold per box and that is per box so paper birds usually come in about small flat boxes of 1d6 plus three sheets of paper so these are very much like little origami boxes, so to speak. However, I am going to roll a d100 to see what price he's offering them at today. Aside from the first box, which he pulls up, and he actually sets on the counter and goes, Since you're a first-time customer and you're just being so nice, just as a sort of, uh, a little gift of family, how about we get you one on the house, eh? You can have this one. This one's full. And he just slides one on the counter to him, and they'll... Yeah, he'll set it next to what appears to be the cash register, though Chaos knows there is no cash register. This is a magical conjuration. There is no register. Yeah. And he looks over the paper, say, looks over the, say, the origami, say, play, origami too. He say, he's double checking it, making sure there's no funny business. And... Yeah, this is... The first box is genuinely the magic item. The first box is genuinely a box of paper birds. Mm -hmm. And I already did roll for it before. So Bill has... Uh, he actually rolled max for the first one, so he has nine paper birds. Mm -hmm. Well, if you decide to get more boxes... Well, actually, since these have lost a good portion of their sheets, I'm actually putting them on discount. And since I want to be nice to you, I'll even discount it a little further to... 50 gold a box? Eh? Eh? 50 gold a box. And you said you've got about five there? Eh, four now that I gave you one. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't want to take away your entire stock. I mean, nobody else has come around for them. You don't have to take the whole stock. But if you need more pieces of paper, one or two couldn't hurt. One or two couldn't hurt indeed. And I'm gonna roll him persuasion. Give me a hot minute. Hee hee hee. Because the Tsar is... He's hes putting on the salesman. He, he's putting on the... That's an 18. Let me roll for Bell to see if he can resist getting more. Huh? Suppose getting multiple boxes couldn't hurt. Hey, that's a guy, that a boy. How many boxes you want? And I'm gonna roll a d4, because there are indeed four boxes left. <laughs> now here's the gimmick for the Tsar's shopping, however. If you decide to get a magic item of any kind from the Tsar, you need to roll 1d100. And if you fail that 1d100, you need to roll another one. So, Dell is getting... Well, we have to roll the d4 and find out. How many more boxes is he getting? Well, I have a decent amount of money from our recent excursion over to the Luthbean Alliance, so I would suppose... I'll take three more. Three more what I got! Let me get these for you. 
Uh, since you've actually gotten one full box, do you want it to come with a pen? I know people like pens. Ooh, a pen sounds delightful, actually. And he just... Uh, you do note the pens are not magical in any way. They're mm. just... These are cute antique pens. Mm -hmm. This this is very much an antique shop. And he grabs them, and I am indeed going to have to roll 1d100 for the other three boxes. Yeah, and Chaos is watching this very closely. Almost... Almost out of characterly sternly, because he knows what he's dealing with. <laughs> yeah, it, I think Chaos can also tell there is firstly a very strong aura of magic in the building. Not to say it's stronger than his, but it's just like there is a lot of magic. In no, the no, ma really say Chaos can. Strong. Yeah, Chaos is, is a knows that trickery and stuff. He knows about cursed items and stuff, mm -hmm. like stuff that he uses himself. But at the same time, he's not looking for tricks for. Bell for right now. He is going to be very... He's going to be very strict with this Kitsune if this goes badly. Well, the first one is indeed genuine. It's above 50, so the first one is a properly functional full box of paper birds. The second one we'll get to in a minute, but I have to roll for the third one. And since this is the only transaction going on, unless you want Mad Lad or Chaos to shop a little, then this no. will be... This is the end of the session. So yeah, 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 say, yeah. Mad Lad doesn't really care about this stuff. He's probably he's probably looking around at the bits and baubles, but maybe he'll come back later. Chaos is just making sure is a he is a his friend is not getting swindled swindled by this Kasune. Well, most of it is genuine. The first box and the third box are a properly working set, but I need to roll another D one hundred for the second one. This is the hidden mechanic to the Czar's Bazaar. You can get just, a, depending on what's in stock, you can get a whole lot of different magic items here, but the problem is if they're genuine or not. Mm -hmm. And the second, well, technically third, but second box, well, let's see. Oh, oh, there's a little bird staying, um, staying in the honeysuckle bush outside my window because there's a loud car going by. I'm sorry, buddy. Oh, look at you. I'm sorry. Okay, the second, the second slash third one is not harmful, thankfully. That was a 51, so that was close. That was close to being bad. So, two out of the three boxes are genuine boxes of paper birds. The third one, however, well, the third one might be something else. But because Bell rolled successfully, it's probably, since it's not a consumable magic item that, like, you eat... It may be that it's just the papers do something different than turn into birds. You can't detect anything intentionally malicious about that box. You just know it's a little, it's a little quirky compared to the other boxes. And Chaos probably once he sets it down, he does sort of that he, he like rests his arm and hand on that particular box and does that like I can't I can't do it on mic, but like that ta wrapping of fingers just in a wave sort of motion. Mm-hmm. All right, so you're going to be getting three more boxes. And since... Right, you're going to be getting three more boxes. Sorry, I love adopting the accents of people that visit. Yours is so nice. You're going to be getting three more boxes, and that's going to be 50 gold per box, so that's going to be 150 gold. And that's still, that's still applying the family discount. So, oh, yeah, no, 150 is fine. 150 is good. And he's going to reach into his pouch, and he's going to get 150. Indeed. And he's going to hand the shopkeeper Kitsune 150. And there's a brief moment where you can see he's actually parsing over the gold for a minute. Mm -hmm. But he can tell it's real, so... He puts it into the cash register, but since you have true sight, it's a sleight of hand trick. Instead of putting it into the cash register, it disappears into his hammer space. Mm -hmm. He makes it disappear, like a magician. Mm -hmm. 150 gold out of Bell's pocket. And there you have it. Three, nah, four boxes of paper birds. I assume you're planning on keeping a lot of long-distance communication. Always helpful, always useful. Always. Well, it's so long as they work. I mean, the person I want to write to, I don't know exactly where he is, and if he's on another plane, these turn to ash, right? Yep, that's how paper birds work. If they're on the same plane as you, don't matter the distance, they'll go far. If they're not, 
Eh, I'll know. Y'all know. Will that be all? Aside from the pen, which is nice, thank you. Don't mention it. Uh, that'll be about it. I may come back later to have a look around, but this was really all I wanted. So, thank you. Hey, don't mention it. It's always fun making new friends and meeting new family. Just, you come on back, eh? I love seeing new faces come back. Alright, uh, do either of you want anything else? And he turns to Madeline and, uh, Huh? You know. Madeline's probably just looking around. Uh, nah, I'm good. And Chaos gives a wry smile. Oh no, I think I will be good. And he sort of looks at looks at this Kasune and stuff. Though I'll definitely be keeping an eye on you. Well, you don't want to keep too much of one. I'm always moving around, so I may not be here too long. Oh, trust me, I have an uncanny way of finding people. If there's something I want for you, yeah, I, I will be able to get there to where you are. <laughs> And I hope I'd be able to get it to you without too much fuss, mister. And when he looks up to you, I'm going to roll him an insight to see if he can actually look through the disguise. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a relatively, say, low one just because Chaos wants to know, wants this Kasune to know who's, who's, who's he's dealing with. Well, that's fine, because that's a nat 20 plus 12. Yeah. You, as a Kasune, know for a fact that if this god wanted to, he could disguise himself. You know that he can turn himself to something that you couldn't detect. This god is honestly trying to pull a power move on you as you are seen through this disguise of a, hu a human, look more of a real kind human, to go mm -hmm. in the underneath of a tune that is a chimera sort that is radiating a godly aura who is... By his smile, looking straight through your disguise and seeing for exactly what you are. Yeah, this is this is game recognized game. When he smiles, he, it's like the other two don't notice, but there's like this feeling of menace. It's like the JoJo's aura between you. You're just smiling, but also just staring right through each other. And you can tell from that sleek, sweet smile on his face and the slightly sharper look in his eye. Yeah, he can see through you, but he's not actually intimidated. Far from it, actually, you're not used to seeing others confident in front of you. And this Kitsune, in spite of only having six tails instead of the full nine, is fully confident in spite of recognizing you. Very dangerous choice, but he do him. But if that'll be all, you may just want to wait a little while for the rain to kick off. I mean, it's... Starting to pour something fierce out there. I don't know when it's gonna be over soon. Oh, no, actually, I love walking home in the rain. Really? Yes, it's quite refreshing, really, compared to the environments I'm used to. Ah, oh, well, don't let me stop you, then. Just come on back now, you hear? Oh, I hear, I hear. You stay safe and dry, Mom. You as well, cuz. So long! And he gives a wave, and Bell takes his four boxes, his four tiny little boxes, and... Leaves the shop. Chaos is the last to leave the shop, and when the t other two out uh, are out of earshot from him, he smiles and looks back at the Kitsune. You're either really bold or really stupid. And he leaves the tent. The last thing you hear is him talking to the air. He says, I get that a lot. And for a brief moment after you leave, with the way the rain sort of changes the sight, and there's a distant flicker of lightning, so you know there's a storm that's starting to come in. Mm -hmm. You can't get rid of the entire weather system. There is there is part of a system in there. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. And for a brief moment, his silhouette doesn't look quite as small as the Aladrin does. And for a brief moment, has very long ears, a very long keen snout, and some very fluffy tails. He then gets back to sorting his things. And Bill, of course, fulfilling the word that he was going to get a treat for Mad Lad. He knows they have ice cream at home, but he, he's going to get him something on the way home. Something nice and warm instead of cold. You know? Yeah. And when Chaos rejoins the group, he does sit down as they're eating. And he's like, I would be very careful, both of you, going back into that shop. It, does not, it is not as it appears. And though 
thankfully nothing malicious came into your say possessions this time. I suggest you be be careful upon future journeys. He stares at you for a moment. And you can kind of parse in his expression whether he's trying to tell whether to take you seriously or if you're doing a bit. Like, pulling a fast one, like a fun one. But then just goes, I'll keep that in consideration, thank you. And goes right back to eating his, uh... I like to think he probably, I like to think he probably got something like, uh... You probably went to, like, a brief little restaurant to get some take-home stuff. Yeah. Probably some hot, nice hot jumbo shrimp that are, mm -hmm. you know, fried and stuffed with uh -huh. all these bits. Yeah. Ugh. But I think that's a good place to end it off there. Mm hmm Just bringing your food home and enjoying it while a storm rages outside the treehouse. And, Bill, the last thing that he's heard asking is, now, if I could just figure out how to word a love letter, that'd be great. And chaos! That... Which chaos <laughs> just, like, pops up out of nowhere. <laughs> On my own! Chaos! On my own! And that joke sort of gag it. He just slowly goes out of frame. <laughs> and Bell smiles at him and the camera cuts away. And there is still, in the distance, a black bird watching. Mm -hmm. And that is where we end it off. Just Yay! a little too tired to have a second round, but maybe someday Mala can get the rematch. Yeah. But in spite of the title, Bell won the fight against the small child and he's actually remembered how to summon minions. So that's fun. Indeed. Thank you all for listening in on this FPS. I hope you have a good time zone. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Remember to stay six feet apart, get all your sleep and all your food, and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye.